The first affiliate arc was very hyped up. It was supposed to be the ending of the worker saga, the final nail in the coffin, but it ended on a very underwhelming note. There were so many build up events to this arc, such as Hunt for Hostel, Hunt for Big Deal, G Chang's introduction to the countryside, and so much hype revolving around the workers' war with Allied. With the first affiliate, it seemed like this dragged out worker saga might actually come to an end, and maybe we'll finally get a conclusion on Eugene, his brother, and everything that's been happening in this story so far. But no, we don't get that, and this is why the first affiliate was a disappointment. So we begin this arc with Allied entering the affiliate via Jihan getting hired as an ambulance worker, but it doesn't matter because Allied enters by force anyway. So I did enjoy how they incorporated the Quark brothers from last arc, and I really like this duo, so please keep them relevant to keep Ji Chang's legacy intact. After Allied entered the first affiliate, it really did just feel like a series of fights over and over and over again. The saving grace with this is that some of the fights were incredibly hyped, such as Zack vs. Johan, the 4 Crewheads vs. Basement Hulk, and of course UI Daniel vs. UI Daniel. Lesser hyped fights, but still good were Goo vs. Basement Hulk, Goo vs. Tom, Jake vs. Samuel, Jake vs. Jin Young, and Eli vs. Vasco were also just okay. But there were definitely some low fights that I didn't really care about, and when you're reading weekly, you just aren't as excited because you know Hudson is fighting some old ass pre generation guy, or Zack is fighting two pre generation guys, and also Jerry vs. Warren, really not that interesting either, even though they squashed their beef. I don't know. Other than the sequence of fights that were either hit or miss, I did enjoy the premise of Taejin and Vinjin's storyline a lot. It of course set up more of Cheong Liang and also gave more insight with Jake Kim's brother, the King of Seoul, who made multiple appearances this arc and was heavily hyped up for the future reveal. Another bright star of this arc was the entirety of UI Daniel's rampage. Like of course this character is the definition of hype and it was brilliant to see UI Daniel versus UI Daniel. The first affiliate arc basically was like a tower of rooms, and they would continually drop one member of Allied to fight the opponent while the rest of Allied continued forward. Hudson was the first one to stay behind and really did nothing important at all this arc and progressed literally zero with his character. Warren was stopped by Jerry by some reason and Vasco stayed behind next to take on Eli. The next character is the absolute goat and made me like him even more, it's Zack. This guy pulled his weight and way more because he really cleaned up in the first affiliate. First, facing two pre-generation guys, later beating one of them, and then Johan Xiang, then Yisu. To be fair, Yisu is pretty fodder. Then, he tries to block Basement Hulk, but yeah, Zack must have been extremely tired here, and Zack gets one shot. After Zack's escapades, we get to Jake Kim's alternate story during this arc. We would often go into Jake's perspective, the second main character, and see how he deals with things on his end. He enters the first affiliate alone to find Jin Young, and he ends up accomplishing his goal. Jake fights Samuel, and they sort of squash their beef, and then he sees Jin Young, who gives him more context about his brother murdering his father, and his dormant gap wrong genes within him. But overall, I didn't care for Jake that much in this story. What I really did enjoy was Daniel. Daniel was pretty funny during this arc. He was also a boss. The first thing Daniel does is slap Logan Lee around like an insect. Very enjoyable to read, might I say. And then he goes to rescue his second body which is in UI mode. This was definitely the highlight of the arc for me. When Daniel enters his UI state after going unconscious, we get a snippet of a mysterious person talking to him, saying that Charles Choi comes first. We also see that the second body knows the King of Souls attacks, which gives more intrigue to the second body, and more mystery as to what the past was behind it. The fight between UI Daniel and UI Daniel felt like straight up fan service. But hey, I'm here to eat it up all day. Now for my main gripes with this arc, Jin Young Park. With so much hype to meet Jin Young and his character being around for so long at this point, I was really disappointed how they made an excuse using his seizures to not be able to give any information to Daniel at all. Like he was the guy who Daniel was chasing for like almost 100 chapters. He saw Jin Young in his mother's old picture album, and he's super important to the plot apparently. But what did he provide in the 1A arc? Literally nothing, and we barely moved the plot of Lookism along. No information on the second body, no information with his ties with Daniel, nothing. The 1A arc felt like it could have been so much more, and it just didn't deliver anything in the end. It was good that Eli's arc concluded with Hostel and him joining back, but it's not like Eugene's workers fell or anything. The president of 1A, Bake Yul, is also extremely forgettable. That backstory of him making his brother into Basement Hulk was just so sad and also so messed up. Before I read this arc, I actually felt like it was an ultimate arc to tie out the worker saga before Charles Choi. You know what would have been cool? I thought. Mandioc, Yu Sung, and Ryuhei would make appearances to have an all out war with Allied, something much grander, but none of that happened. The ending of Gu Kim and Tom Lee also just felt weird to me, because like, we end the arc with two characters who weren't even in the arc to begin with. Gu's secret friends were a cool reveal, and I think Taejin was probably one of the most important things we got out of this arc. 
We didn't get info on Daniel's second body, Janina's past, Eugene's past, or anything to do with an ultimate worker's conclusion. The conclusion of this arc was sweet I'll say. I'm a fan of Eli, so I'm really happy that he's back to being the daddy of Hostel. Hudson the absolute fraud is also living in Hostel, which I find hilarious. And we end the arc with Daniel making a truce with Eugene to take down Charles Troy. Pretty cliche, but I hope Eugene has more in store for us, because he just seems like a lesser version of Charles Troy to me at this point. Even though Eugene has been sort of the main villain until now, I still haven't seen him do much other than sit at his desk smiling. Also, the heartfelt scene with Gun and Goo really pulled in my heartstrings. So I'm excited to see what Goo's plans in the future are in regards to betraying Charles Choi. But all those things really have nothing to do with 1A. That's why Lucasum's most hyped arc was a disappointment. So if you did enjoy this video, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Did you enjoy the 1A arc? Was it disappointing for you? I'm sure a lot of people enjoy things like UI Daniel versus UI Daniel, and maybe seeing Jin Young Park in action. But other than that, I honestly still believe it was a disappointment. Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Any criticism of this arc? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe, and peace.